Hi YouTube friends, today's video is a pumpkin soup recipe and cheese scones that we've been making for many many years. It's ideal if you go trick-or-treating and have all your friends back for a party. A nice winter warming soup, ideal for evening meal or when you've been out and you want something nice and warm. Now we've put a little bit of red chilli in ours. You can omit the chilli if you don't like anything hot but just a little bit gives it a little bit of background strength. And for cheese, you can go with obviously a mild, mature cheddar. You could even put Stilton cheese in as well, or a nice strong cheese of your choice. You can also put a finely chopped onion in as well if you want. And you can top it up and roast the pumpkin seeds in the oven with a little bit of olive oil and salt, and then sprinkle those on the side for a healthy snack as well. So I hope you'll join me. Thanks for dropping in and thank you for being here. If you've been here um, for a long time, or thank you for coming today and I hope you enjoy the content. I do a lot of making and baking and sewing and all sorts of crafts, upcycling, lots of uh, a mixture of uh, things that I make. So I hope you'll subscribe and join me for future videos. So let's get on to the recipe and making pumpkin soup and cheese scones. Right then, for this simple recipe, we need two onions, and we're going to peel and chop those finely, and then a pumpkin of your choice. And I've got a huge big white one at the moment, and I've got this small orange one as well, so I'm going to use that today. And then I'm going to put a couple of potatoes in to thicken it as well. I'm going to put a tin of tomatoes in. I'm going to put some chicken stock cubes in as well. And I've got red chilli as well, and I'll put a chilli in ours, but I'll take the seeds out. About a third of a tube of tomato and salt and black pepper to taste. So very simple, just get your vegetables all peeled and then we'll chop this pumpkin. I roast the pumpkin in the oven with a bit of garlic and olive oil on. But you don't have to, so for quickness, I'm going to make this quick, simple recipe without doing that. But this is wonderful, roasted with olive oil and garlic in slices and then toasting as well all the seeds. Put the seeds in as well so they toast and become very nutty and that's a lovely healthy snack, what I mentioned before. Always give your pumpkin and potatoes and everything a wash first. Right, so we'll use all this pumpkin, whether it be a medium sized one. What it's like inside, okay. And you've probably in the past just cut the pumpkin up and put a candle in and not use any of this. But this, as I say, is well worth using. So just look at it as a vegetable that you can actually cook with instead of just as a Halloween decoration. So all this inside, just scoop it out. We'll roast these, we'll wash all the flesh away. And it's best just to get your fingers in and just scoop it out like this with your hands so that you've got the seeds out. The flesh is fine, you don't have to take all this flesh away, but it just comes away with the seeds most of it anyway. That's a good thing about it, there's no way to really like cooking at all. Even when you, you actually roast it off in the oven with olive oil, that's why I say wash this because this all gets caramelised and some people just eat the whole lot. Hope you're having a good day. The weather's turned here in England now. We haven't got all that nice warm weather so it's getting quite cold now. It will get colder of course but it certainly is autumnal weather this week. Hello to everybody around the world. I hope you're all well and safe and you are having a fairly decent week. Some places don't really celebrate Halloween. Now my family have grown up, I don't really celebrate Halloween, but I celebrate the season of autumn. And so I decorate with pumpkins and autumnal leaves, making rustic autumnal leaves and twigs into wreaths, which is nice. I'm not really bothered about all the ghosts and things like that. <laughs> Right, so just chop these off, like so. And because on this occasion I'm not roasting it first, you'll just have to peel all the 
outer edging off and discard that. But if you've got time, just cut them in slices like that, drizzle it with olive oil and put some garlic in and then roast it in the oven for about 45 minutes on 180, 190 degrees. And then when you've done that, you can blitz it in the food processor and then add it in the pan with onions, with tomatoes, with the chilli and it will impart a more richer flavour if you do it that way. At the moment we're trying to have a low fat diet so we're trying not to have hardly any fat in our diet at the minute. And because I'm doing cheese scones for some of the family that's enough fat at the moment. And in a nice large pan for the soup that has a very old pressure cooker pans. This is a lovely little pumpkin, it's not real, but they not like that. Right, so what I've done now is I've chopped the onions, finely chopped them, okay, and I've chopped all the pumpkin into nice big chunks, okay, and I'm going to chop up the potato as well into chunks. So what you need is some olive oil in your pan, probably about a tablespoon, and then we'll just pop in a little bit of garlic as well, and we'll just pop the onions in and just saute them for about three or four minutes. Then we'll add all the other vegetables shortly. So I'll bring you across to the side. Right, and so we're going to put about a heap teaspoon of garlic in the pan. And this is minced garlic that what we do is buy several bulbs of garlic and then just chop them up and then blitz them in the food processor and put some olive oil in it and then store it in the fridge so we can just keep spooning it off instead of doing it several times a day or a week. Straight in with the onions. In with the chilli. When you've got a nice bit of colour to your onions and they're quite translucent, that is the time to actually add all the rest of your vegetables. So in with the potatoes. Stock cube, chicken stock cube here, and you can use vegetarian if you wish. In with a pumpkin, smells lovely of garlic and the onions. Tin of tomatoes, fill that up as well again with water. And I would say about a third of a tube of tomato puree. It is quite a lot, but it's nice. Add as much salt and pepper as you wish. Right, so it's bubbling up nicely now and the tomato and all the flavours are actually blending. I would say cook this down for about half an hour and then I'll come back to it and show you what it's like. So while that's bubbling away I'm going to make some lovely cheese stones and this will go lovely with the pumpkin soup. So in a bowl, I've put 225 grams of self-raising flour. Now you can double this up. This should make roughly, I would think, about four scones, but I'll we'll double it up. And then I've used 50 grams of butter. So what I'm going to do is put the butter into the flour. And then we want one teaspoon of baking powder as well, which will help it to rise. I always put a little bit of white pepper in mine and you want a pinch of salt you've got salt in your cheese anyway and using your fingertips you want to make them into fine breadcrumbs so using the tips of your fingers just mix it lightly lift as it combines into breadcrumbs getting lots of air and giving it a good mix at the same time. You 
can also put uh, mixed herbs in here as well if you wish, as much as you want, probably about a quarter of a teaspoon, and then mix it all around. And that's like fine breadcrumbs now. And then I put 200 grams of mature cheddar, grated. The recipe calls for around about 110, but I always think it's so much better to put a lot of cheese in, cheese scones, so you can really taste it. Then we need some milk, so make sure all the cheese and the flour and everything is incorporated, and then you measure out your milk, you want about 60 ml, so it combines and is not too wet. You need to then go around with your hand and try and incorporate all in. And it'll come together. Don't be tempted to put more milk in because with the heat of your hand, your butter will melt a little bit and everything will all come together. And then that is your mixture. And it's gone into a nice soft dough. And you want to flour your board roll it out. Right then, so what I'm using is a recipe from the National Trust Book of Scones and um, I'll just show you the recipe here. You do see Welsh cheese and herbs scones and the, if you want to sort of click on the recipe here or Google it, it's called Welsh cheese and herbs scones. So I half my recipe, so double up if you want to make 12, this should probably make about 5 or 6. To make 12, it would be 450 grams of self-raising flour, 2 teaspoons of baking powder, 1 teaspoon of salt, 100 grams of butter, a teaspoon of mixed herbs, 225 grams of mature cheddar, 120 ml of milk, and it says 120 ml of water, but I never use that. pre oven to 220 degrees centigrade now and you'll need to bake them for about 10 minutes. So what we're going to do now is we've obviously made this into a sort of a soft dough. We're going to put it on a floured board and then just roll it out. And you can use whatever cutter you wish to use. I usually roll it out evenly a few inches in diameter and then I'm using one of these which is what I use. I've got a, a cutter, use one of those. You can make them as deep as you like. If you want them much thicker then they'll be a lot bigger scones as well and we'll get more out of them. We get on average six out of this mixture. The last one I always just scrumple up and then obviously put it into a shape with my hands, flatten it off at the top and that'll be a cooked taster. <laughs> right, straight on a, a baking tray now. If you wish you could put some egg white on the top and that would make it glazed. And put some more cheddar cheese on top if you if you wish. Bake for 10 minutes until golden brown and then transfer onto a wire rack to cool. Serve warm with butter. Now back to the soup. And I've just added another about half a pint of water. Because as it's boiling, obviously everything is evaporating. So I've got another half a pint of water in until it cooks down. I said about half an hour in total for this soup. When you put the scones in, you want to put the pumpkin seeds in. I'll show you how to do that now. So, in a baking pan, you want to put your pumpkin seeds. A little tiny bit of olive oil, not much. And then I use sea salt because it, it becomes nice and crunchy. On. and then roast that on the top of the oven at the same time as you do your scones. Ok, 
Okay, when this is cooked, let it cool for about 15 20 minutes and pass it through a food processor and blitz it all so it becomes a nice, thick, rich consistency. And I'll show you that when it's done. Right, I've just got these out of the oven, very hot. And I've got a, a nice rice to them, lovely colouring on the top, and it's all fluffy and lovely and gorgeous inside. So I'm going to put those on the side, and just taste a little bit as well. So that tastes absolutely beautiful, very, very cheesy, lots of herbs, great flavouring in there and very fluffy and soft, really nice. So I really recommend that you make that. Um, the soup is just nearly done, so I'm gonna blitz that in the liquidizer now, and I'll pour some in a bowl for you, and then take a picture and show you what it's turned out like. It really will be nice, so I'd, I'd recommend that you make it. And thank you for stopping by. I'm gonna now concentrate on making things for Christmas, because we're in October now, and therefore we need to get ready for Christmas present, gift ideas, how, we, how to wrap, decorating the house, etc., wreaths. Um, I have quite a lot of Christmas videos up on the YouTube, so if you'd like to scroll down my videos, you'll come across lots of them. And I particularly would love you to see the wreath one because I made a huge wreath last year and I did take some video of it the process making it from absolutely scratch with artificial and fresh foliage and it turned out absolutely fantastic so I'd love you to see that and watch that because that video I think it'll be really really helpful and you can save an absolute fortune because the size of that leaf that I made was absolutely huge it would have been about 100 125 pounds to buy it from a florist and it doesn't cost much at all so I'd really recommend you give it a go Okay, so I shall show you what this pumpkin soup and the scones look like in a moment and thank you very much for watching and I hope you pop back. Please subscribe and it'll help my channel grow and thank you for being here. Okay, thank you.